Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel, my book-loving friends. I want to start off this video today with a confession that I think many of us can relate to. I have a book buying problem, but stay with me here. Maybe it's not my fault. This is what happens. Let's say, hypothetically, I'm home over fall break, and my mom is like, Sarah, do you want to go to Second and Charles this weekend? Am I supposed to say like, no, I don't want to go to Second and Charles. Of course I want to go to Second and Charles this weekend. I'm not done. And then let's say while I'm at Second and Charles, just shopping along, they send me a text message coupon telling me me that I get 10% off my purchase of $50 or more. This is all hypothetical by the way and definitely did not happen a couple of weekends ago. I obviously am not going to ignore a signal from the Second and Charles gods. So then I end up leaving the store carrying eight books and a little more broke than I already was an hour earlier. I physically cannot leave behind books that are on sale that I want to read because then I get in my head that if I don't purchase said books now, then I'm never going to come across these books for as good as a deal as they are today. Which in all fairness might be true, but this mentality leads me to spend money that I probably should be saving. Book shopping is definitely a double-edged sword sometimes. Anyways, I went off on a little tangent there. What's new? Back to what we are here for today. Today I will be doing a collective haul of all of the books I have purchased in the past month or so. This is the first time I've fully taken stock of everything I've purchased and I'm realizing that I should probably lay off on the book buying, especially with the holiday season coming up. I need to be more frugal. Over the past month, I've accumulated books from Barnes & Noble, Second and & Charles, and Target. Let's start with Second and & Charles. That was my receipt. Don't need that anymore. First, I picked up Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinborough. This is actually the Book of the Month edition, and I've actually been considering choosing this as a Book of the Month add-on, but it's even better that I found it at Second and Charles for cheaper. For only $6.25 compared to Book of the Month, I would have had to pay $10. I've been wanting to read this ever since I saw it on a Bookstagram post that showed off books with similar vibes to Verity. That's all I needed to know to mentally add this book to my mental TBR. I literally imagine my brain as like a desktop screen with different folders containing different information. Of course, one being books I would like to read in the future. It looks like we follow our protagonist who's obsessed with this married man. And from the outside, this husband and wife look like the picture perfect couple. But like most things, it's not as it seems and something in this marriage is very, very wrong. I like how in the synopsis, it literally states, and if you think you know where the story is going, think again, because behind her eyes is like no other book you've read before. And then up top, it says, why is everyone talking about the ending of behind her eyes? So I'm predicting that in here, there's gonna be some like big dramatic plot twist. Can't wait to read, I've heard great things about it. Next, I found Actor Age Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. Here I go again, buying books and series out of order. But I know for this series, you don't necessarily need to read them in order and instead can read them as standalones. The book series just follows different sisters in the Brown family. I would like to eventually read all of them and I'm not sure if the stories overlap in any way. So let me know if you've read the series, how you would recommend reading them. In this rom-com, we followed the relationship between Eve and Jacob. And initially they meet when Eve interviews for a chef position at Jacob's bed and breakfast. But then when she doesn't get the job, she hits him with a car. <laughs> oh my God, she hits Jacob with a car. Supposedly by accident? Yeah, right. So now Jacob has a broken arm and his b, &B is understaffed. So he has no other choice but to hire Eve. I believe we have the grumpy sunshine trope in here as well. This sounds like a chaotic fun time and I'm here for it. The next book I picked up is based on Noelle Gallagher's recommendation. That is Ready Player One. Who is the author? Ernest Klein. This is one of Noelle's favorite books of all time. I am kind of worried about the science fiction aspect in here. My brother actually likes science fiction. So if I end up liking this, then Michael, this is coming to you and I will make you read it. Honestly, the synopsis is kind of confusing, but I'm pretty sure that in this book, the world is like in this dystopian, disheveled state. And to escape reality, people escape to this virtual utopia known as the Oasis. And the creator of this world has promised massive power and fortune to whoever can solve the puzzles hidden within it. So we follow our protagonist Wade as he takes on this challenge where players are willing to kill each other for the ultimate prize. And in doing so, Wade has to confront the real world he has always been so desperate to escape. Yeah, so obviously this is a very different read for me, but I like switching things up occasionally because then it makes me appreciate my favorite genre even more. Also reading thrillers 24 seven is probably not the healthiest thing. And saying that, my next book is a thriller. The Girl in 6E by A.R. Tor, Torre. 
there's no accent so I'm guessing tour not like I know the French language very well I also bought this based on another booktubers recommendation Haley Hughes this time the cover of this book is so eerie like when I see this I see a woman trapped behind a glass shower door trying to get out all that's written on the back of the book is my life is simple as long as I follow the rules one don't leave the apartment two never let anyone in three don't kill anyone well one of those rules is a lot more dramatic than the other two I've obeyed these rules for three years but rules were meant to be broken you know can't argue with that I also forgot I bought this book as well that is definitely not slightly concerning I got Karen Slaughter pieces of her no let me retry that. I got Pieces of Her by Karen Slaughter. A few months ago, I actually picked up Girl Forgotten by Karen Slaughter, even though I knew it followed a character from this novel. But I heard that you don't really need to read Pieces of Her to read Girl Forgotten. But then the more I hear people talk about Girl Forgotten, the more I hear that actually, yeah, you should read Pieces of Her first. So I picked up Pieces of Her. So in this thriller, we follow a mother and daughter, and after a visit to the mall explodes into horrifying violence, the daughter suddenly sees a whole new side to her mom, because it turns out that the mom has been on the run for nearly 30 years and has been secretly hiding the woman she once was. So now the daughter is trying to uncover these secrets from her mom's past because if she can't there may be no future for either of them. I don't think I'll get to this book for a while. I just don't think it's her time yet. Also I have another book by Karen Slaughter which you'll see shortly that I would like to read first. If you saw my previous video this next book should come as no surprise. The X Hex by Aaron Sterling. Literally just the other day I filmed a Halloween reading vlog of this book. Of course go check it out if you haven't already. I've seen this book at Second and Charles before and I haven't picked it up, but the last time I went I told myself if I saw this book again I was going to pick it up because I just thought it would be perfect for October. I actually didn't see it at first, which was kind of disappointing, but once I spotted her hiding between other books, I snatched her like the last slice of pizza. The last book I bought from Second and Charles was Second First Impressions by Sally Thorne. The color of this book along with these turtles Stop, stop. <laughs> oh, I love it. The cover's so cute. Additionally, this book takes place in a retirement community, which is also really cute. The synopsis of this book actually reminds me of actor age Eve Brown, because in this one, the characters Ruthie and Teddy start off on the wrong foot as well, because Teddy accidentally mistakes Ruthie for a little old lady. No offense to Ruthie or anyone with the name Ruthie, but that is kind of, how do I put this nicely? More of a mature name, something that would be prominent in the older community, but so is the name Teddy so and then the characters also end up working together too but when one of the more eccentric residents needs yet another personal assistant to torment Ruthie offers up Teddy and mayhem ensues it seems like this book has gotten some mixed reviews I feel like Sally Thorne's first book The Hating Game blew up so fast and is now considered a classic in the romance genre that the author's other books instantly got this ridiculously high expectation from readers I'm going to go into this with an open mind though and an open heart. Wait, I actually have some books that I acquired from my mom. <laughs> okay, I've realized that I lied to y'all. Previously, I've mentioned that my mom doesn't have a bookshelf. She actually does have a bookshelf more like a singular shelf. The rest of the shelves are filled with my dad's economic books, which he'll probably never go back to, but like, same. Like father, like daughter. But when I was last at my house, I knew I wanted to steal these two other books. Did I say steal? I meant borrow. I'm stealing. The two other Sherry Lapina books she owns, which I haven't read yet. One day before the year ends, I will hopefully get around to making the Sherry Lapina ranking video I've been promising. I just gotta read these two first. Do you know what I had to go through to get these books? The bookshelves I'm talking about at my parents' house are in a room that's currently being used for storage. So there was a 50 pound mattress leaning up the shelf I wanted to access. And did I mention that this all took place during night when it was pitch black outside? And no, the room did not have another light source. No overhead light or lamp, but I used my Smarticle particle and came up with the idea to stick my arm behind the mattress with my phone in hand and video record the shelves with my flashlight on so then I could rewatch the video back and see the books I wanted to grab. I'll have to insert the video. It was quite a treacherous journey. It was a bit of a genius moment for me. I don't go to college for nothing. So I did get the two Sherry Lapina books I wanted to read. All I know about these books is that the couple next door involves a baby getting stolen and then I'm gonna take a educated guess and say that a stranger stranger in the house revolves around a stranger in a house. But then I also found on my mom's shelf, Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. I've been debating about what book I wanted to read next from Lisa Jewell, but my mom has inadvertently decided for me, so I love that for me. I cannot make decisions to save my life. It's something I'm working on. 
kinda. Then She Was Gone sounds so good. We follow a mom who 10 years earlier, her daughter disappeared. And now in the present, the mom meets this unexpectedly charming man whose daughter is a spitting image of her own daughter, which understandably stirs up all of the unanswered questions and emotions related to her daughter's disappearance. My mom is actually the person who got me into thrillers. It was during COVID and I needed a new book. It was The Perfect Wife by J.P. Delaney. She was like, here, Sarah, read this. I think you'll like it. And now I'm so deeply in love with thrillers and read about three thrillers a month. Moving on to my Barnes & Noble purchases. No, no looking. You guys are trying to peek. I miss the days when Barnes & Noble actually gave you like a paper bag. My first trip to Barnes & Noble, yes, I went twice in the past month. I went to buy two books in two separate series I've been reading. The first one being Kiss the Sky by Krista and Becca Ritchie. I guess technically this is the first book in the Callaway Sister series, but it's the fourth book in the Addicted series universe. I've been waiting to read these books until I filmed this video, so I'm so excited to read this. I've been so in the mood for this book, so this will be getting read in the very near future. I did get the older cover. The publishers recently released new covers for the spinoff series. I wanted to get the new covers, but my Barnes & Noble didn't have them, and I'm not patient enough to wait until they get them in. Desperate times call for desperate measures, but now I'm worried about them getting in the new covers for the Callaway Sister series because now I want to buy all the books in the old covers so that they match. But when I went to Barnes, they didn't have the other Callaway Sister books, so I couldn't buy them all at once. But what if my store doesn't get in any of the old covers anymore and just gets in the Callaway Sister books and the new covers? I'm gonna be screwed. Oh my god. Okay, I'm rambling again. My store actually did have this cover and then the cover with the man on it. So even though this isn't my favorite cover, I think I picked the better one out of the two. Did I really just state that I disliked the cover even though 10 seconds earlier I was complaining about not getting the other books in the series with similar covers. There is something about this though that reminds me of like older romance books. What am I doing? And then the other book which I went for, I was so excited to find. I found Twisted Lies by Anna Huang. Y'all know I've been on the hunt for this book. This is the fourth and final installment in the Twisted series, which is kind of sad. I don't think this book is going to be enough to quench my never dying thirst for the series. I love the Twisted series. These are romances that are set in college, which each book following one of the girls in this friend group. Twisted Lies tells the love story between Stella and Christian. Sometimes I picture book characters as celebrities. I'm not really sure why, but I I picture Shay Mitchell as Stella. Maybe it's because the books describe her as this tall model-esque girl. So my brain immediately goes, oh, so Shay Mitchell. And then during the same trip, I found two books that have been on my mental TBR on one of Barnes & Noble's buy one get one 50 tables. The first one being another one of Noelle Gallagher's recommendations. Thank you for listening by Julia Whelan. This is a rom-com that explores the audiobook industry, which sounds so fun and is such a unique concept. <gasps> Taylor Jenkins read blurb to a witty, clever, and open-hearted love story full of delicious twists on all your favorite romance tropes. A must read for anyone who loves a good love story. Thank you, TGR. TGR knows best. Books that talk about books are on a whole different level. And then I also picked up Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. Now I've heard that this book gets pretty dark, so I just want to give a little warning there. This thriller follows sisters Claire and Lydia, who are very different. Claire is a glamorous trophy wife of a millionaire, whereas Lydia is a single mother dating an ex-con. Ooh, am I sensing some rich people drama in here? I think I am. But after the murder of Claire's husband, the horror and heartbreak of the disappearance of Claire and Lydia's other sister many years ago comes roaring back into their lives. I've heard such great things about this thriller and how it's many people's favorite book. Karen Slaughter must be the author's second name. It would be too much of a coincidence for a thriller writer to have the name Karen Slaughter. I could be wrong. Who knows? Well, Karen obviously knows. Those Karens. So during my most recent trip to Barnes & Noble, which again, to my defense, I wasn't planning on. It just kind of happened. I was at a strip mall with someone and they wanted to go into this one store and there was a Barnes & Noble right next door. So I went into the Barnes & Noble, of course. But right when I walked in, I immediately saw It Starts With Us by Colleen Hoover with a buy one get one 50 percent off sticker, which is surprising given that this literally just released the week before. I think when Barnes & Noble has overstock of a certain book, they'll sometimes include those books in the sale because that Barnes had like a huge stack of these books on like a ginormous table. I thought I wasn't gonna find this that day, but maybe they were expecting a higher demand for it and that didn't end up happening. I'm sure you guys have already seen every other booktubers 
first reading vlog of this. I don't think booktube has ever experienced such a influx in reading vlogs for a certain book in such a short period of time. As most of you know, It Starts With Us is the second book after It Ends With Us. It's a little contradictory there. You would think that It Starts With Us is first and then It Ends With Us is second. No. You read It Ends With Us and then It Starts With Us. Supposedly in It Starts With Us we get to know Atlas more, which is good because I think I'm in the minority when it comes to my opinion on Atlas. I did not see the sparks between him and Lily. There is no electricity in that building, but I really hope Atlas will be redeemable once I get to know him a little more. So then the book I got 50% off was Maybe in Another Life by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Not only is this book by one of my favorite authors, but it also explores the butterfly effect, which is a topic I find so interesting. That's probably due to my anxiety and how I second guess every decision I make. That's besides the point though. So basically in this book, we follow Hannah after a night out with her best friend Gabby, where she bumps into her high school boyfriend, Ethan. And then in a concurrent storyline, we follow the effects of what would happen depending on whom Hannah leaves the bar with that night. It looks like there's discussion on what in our life is determined by chance. Is anything really meant to be? And is there really such a thing as a soulmate? I adore so many of TJR books and hopefully I can add this one to the list. And then finally, let's go over the two books I got from Target. I got these because they were having a buy one get one 50 sale. <laughs> I really can't resist that sale. Target wasn't even advertising the sale in store. I just happened to be on Target's app one morning and saw the sale on there. So I wasn't really sure how long the sale had been going on. And so I kind of thought the book section was gonna be picked over, but surprisingly, probably because they weren't advertising it, it wasn't. And so I picked up a copy of When in Rome by Sarah Adams. I am guilty of buying this book solely because of the cover. The baking and the prominent orange in the cover is giving Thanksgiving. This romance also takes place in a small town, which is perfect for fall. This looks like a romance between a pop star and a small town baker. Oh my gosh, that sounds so great. I was not the biggest fan of Sarah Adams' other book, The Cheat Sheet. I thought it was okay, but it wasn't anything particularly riveting to me. So this book will probably determine if I will be purchasing other Sarah Adam books in the future, though her covers are always so cute and hard to resist, which could be a potential problem. And then the last book I have here today, it has been on my mental TBR for so long, but I just haven't picked it up yet. That is Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. There's also now a Netflix adaptation out, which I will be watching after. Literally everyone loves this graphic novel series. That's all I really know about these books, and it's been so hyped up that I kind of just want to go into these as blind as I can. Okay, we are done. I'm so excited that I can finally start reading these books. They all sound amazing. I had a lot of fun today just hanging out with you all, chatting about books. It's my favorite thing to do in the world. Let me know your thoughts on any of the books I picked up. Also, as we've established, I'm pretty bad at decision making, so which one should I prioritize? I'm pretty sure that this has been my biggest book haul yet. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. It really does help me and my channel out a lot. You can also comment, interact, subscribe, all that fun YouTube stuff. I'd really appreciate it. And to those who already do, I love you all. I hope you all are having a fantastic day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.